Hey folks, uh, day three of e-learning, looking at Congress specifically today. And if you look at this particular cartoon, we can definitely see that whole idea of polarization going on, where the GOP, that means the Republican-controlled Senate, is blaming the democratically-controlled House, and ultimately nothing gets done. Now, way back in like 2013, so you guys were like in like fifth grade maybe, there was a government shutdown. And we've actually had one government shutdown since then. But back in 2013, when they had the government shutdown, they actually went around and they did this poll. And they asked people, they gave them things like, do you like lice more than you like Congress or Congress more than you like lice? And they actually said that people liked lice more than Congress. They like to use car salesmen. They like root canals, which is like the most awful dental procedure. And they liked Nickelback more than Congress. So if we were in class, and I wish this was the case, every single day for this entire unit, I would play Nickelback because, again, people like Nickelback more than Congress. Enjoy. Never made it as a wise man I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing Tired of living like a blind man I'm sick of sight without a sense of feeling And this is how you remind me All right, enough Nickelback, folks. Let's actually look at page four and we're going to break down basically the differences between the House and the Senate. So there's just a little bit of writing here, a little more than normal, but uh, I think you guys can handle it. So we're going to look first at the Senate, okay? As we've talked about before, the Senate has 100 members. Ever since we actually uh, added Hawaii and Alaska in the middle of the 1900s, we've been up to 50 states, and 50 times 2 is 100. They are six-year terms, and we've talked about that before. So Senate is six letters, starts with S. So remember, Senate is six years. No term limits, which means that they can run again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And actually, the longest serving senator actually was in his eighth term. So uh, actually had gone uh, longer than uh, into past 50 years. Now, in order to run for Senate, you must be 30, not 30 years old and have been in the United States as a citizen for nine years. Don't have to be born here. You just need to become a citizen for nine years. Special responsibilities of the Senate. This all goes back, you know, in part to uh, the waiter rides over to pass the peach treats and appetizers. But we're going to actually break down the difference between what the House and the Senate do. So they're actually the ones that ratify the treaties. So in the treats part of that mnemonic, the Senate has that responsibility. They confirm the presidential appointments. So they're actually the appetizers part of that mnemonic most prominently Supreme Court justices. And then they're the ones that try the impeachment case. We know that. We've, we've seen that happen this semester uh, in terms of impeachment. And we know that, in fact, the Senate did not choose to remove uh, Donald Trump. So they don't do the impeaching. They just do the trying. They are less partisan. That means at the end of the day, senators generally have gotten along better. They're not as controlled by the party leadership. Okay. And most importantly, I think we, we know who the real leader is. That, of course, is Mitch McConnell. But technically, the vice president, in this case, Mike Pence, is the ceremonial leader. The Senate sessions start with him sort of banging the gavel and he gets to break the tie if there is a 50-50 tie. But really, in everyday practice, the turtle himself, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Republican, is the is a Senate Majority Leader. And we know that because the Republicans have a majority in the Senate, so they get to choose the leader. So none of this is probably all that new. We've heard bits and pieces of this before. The House... It's got 435 members. And remember, minimum one per state. And some states like California have like 53 and Illinois has 18. But again, some states like the Dakotas, Montana, Alaska only have one each. Illinois has 18 representatives. As a result of the census, we're probably going to go down to 17. Number of representatives is based on population. We know that. So the biggest states get more representatives in the House. Two-year terms. Again, people like 
Brad Schneider constantly running every two years, Sean Caston every two years, and there's no term limits on that either. Got to be younger. You only have to be 25 in order to run as uh, for the House and have to have been a citizen for seven years. So again, the Senate was always seen as a little bit more prestigious because at the very least, you had to be older and be a citizen here longer. Now, there's two special responsibilities we care about in the House. One is that they initiate tax bills. And we've known that all the way since like the early on when I said, what in your own house do people care about most? And they say taxes. I say, yeah, in your house and in the big house, that's what people care about. The second one is they're the one that impeaches the president. We certainly saw that already. Again, we've had only three presidents that have ever been impeached. None have ever been removed by the Senate. They're more partisan. So actually at the end of the day, Nancy Pelosi, who's the head of Again, a Speaker of the House, she actually has more control over her people in the House than actually uh, the senators do over in the Senate. So Nancy Pelosi, a Democrat from California, is a Speaker of the House because the Democrats have the majority in the House. So again, remember, we know Donald Trump is a Republican. He has what we call the executive branch, but Congress is split between the Republicans on one side in the Senate and the Democrats in the House. So we're actually going to move on real quickly to something else, and that's how do these you know, senators and representatives, you know, what do they do? What's their job? Well, basically, the legislative branch is supposed to make laws. So we've seen this guy before, probably Schoolhouse Rock. You know, How does a bill become a law? I know, that was pretty amazing. You guys want to say that again? How does a bill become a law? And in this case, we're actually going to go through on page five, and we're going to actually go through the process real fast real old school, like how does a bill become a law? So the bill can start in either the House or the Senate. In the end, it needs to actually pass through both of them, but it could start in either place. Next, a bill can only be introduced by a member of Congress. That means one of the 100 senators in the Senate or one of the 435 representatives in the House, not by the president or not by a lobbyist, and lobbyist we'll talk about tomorrow. After a bill is introduced, it doesn't get voted on by everybody. It goes to what we call a committee, a smaller group of senators, if it's in the Senate, or a smaller group of representatives if it's in the House. And the important thing is they're doing research and revision there. They're like trying to figure out like, what is this? Is this good? Is this bad? Let's get more information on it. 90% of all bills sent to a committee die there. That means... They just never heard from again. They go to get researched and revised and they, in fact, never get heard from. Okay, so the rest of the House and the rest of the Senate will never get to really debate them or vote on them. If it receives a majority vote, okay, from the full body, that means that after it's been in committee and it's been revised and it's been researched, and it's one of the 10% that make it out of committee, it'll get voted on by everybody in that body, either the 100 senators or the 435 House members. And if it gets a majority, it passes that part of Congress. It needs to pass both parts. And it must be passed in identical form. Literally every word has to be exactly the same in the House version and the Senate version. So there's no confusion. So you've got the identical version passed in the House with a majority vote, 218 people, and in the Senate, 51 people. And once that happens, okay, once it is passed, the House and the Senate identically, it goes to the president. Now, the president has a couple options. One, sign it. Okay, president signs it means it becomes a law. Or can veto it, namely says no to it. And in that case, it's not dead, dead, dead. Congress has a chance to overturn that veto with a two-thirds vote in both the House and the Senate. That's the overrides for the waiter rides over part of the mnemonic. Very rare, hardly ever happens because it's very tough to get two thirds of both the House and the Senate, but it can happen. So that's how a bill becomes a law, sort of in a nutshell. But we're going to actually focus on C, part C, this committee part. Okay. We'll leave it up here for just a second. Okay. Now, if you look at how a bill becomes a law, you don't have to look at it very much on here. You just got to look where the blue stars are. So after the bill is introduced, the, the stars on either side are all the committee stuff, either on the House or the Senate. What I'm trying to show you is a large part of this whole process is getting looked at in this committee 
Again, these smaller groups that are researching, revising, they're bringing in witnesses to testify about whether this will be good or bad. And interestingly, in the work of the committee, there are experts that are brought in. Now, just as a, a weird sort of way of talking about this, sometimes the experts aren't exactly the experts that you might think. Yes, way back when you guys were like one years old, or maybe some of you actually were born in 2002, Elmo dressed up in a suit and tie, okay, and came to the House of Representatives for a committee meeting where basically he testified, which I don't really know how a puppet testifies per se, about the need for school music funding. Now, again, this was sort of a, a big deal, like Elmo's here, like, but really, what does he really know? But the cause was to try to get, you know, attention on it. And Elmo talked about whatever Elmo knows, like Mr. Bubbles or whatever his, his people are, his fish, okay? Now, here's our daily question. And it actually involves you watching two clips. And I think that you'll be at least mildly entertained uh, by both. Now, two sort of famous comedians, one Stephen Colbert, who used to have a show on Comedy Central called The Colbert Report. Now he's got a late night television show. And Seth Rogen, who uh, interestingly is Canadian, but uh, has appeared in many, many comedies over time. And both of them are going to come to Congress. Stephen Colbert is going to go to the House for a committee meeting and Seth Rogen's going to go to the Senate. Now, both of them are brought in as, quote unquote, experts. In one case, Stephen Colbert is brought in as an expert on basically migrant farming, okay? Now, he treats this basically as satire, and he comes in in character, and he appears like he always does in his character as a bit sort of almost racist at first, and then he sort of comes around. But he it's important to know he's doing a comedy bit. That's the whole thing that he's doing, okay? On the flip side... Seth Rogen is talking about Alzheimer's, certainly a disease that he knows well because his mother-in-law suffered from it. Again, both were brought in to be experts. Now, the question we're asking you is, whose testimony had a better chance of making progress for their cause? Either Stephen Colbert for migrant um, fruit and vegetable pickers in California, or Seth Rogen in terms of money being given to Alzheimer's. I think there's a legitimate argument to be made for either one, but you need to watch both. And in your answer, you need to indicate why you thought either Colbert's was more, you know, perhaps um, beneficial for making progress to their cause over Rogan or vice versa. Okay. So the clips are right here. And I will also, um, you could, I don't, you can't click on here, obviously, because it's not a live link, but I'll have both clips up for you to watch. All right, folks, again, due by 9 p.m. tonight.